Hi, it's Jason Robert Brown. This isn't what this video is about, but I did want to explain the reason I'm Jason Robert Brown instead of just Jason Brown. I always was Jason Brown. But then uh, when I was in junior high school, my last year of junior high school, there was another Jason Brown in the same class as I was. And a year behind us, there was another Jason Brown coming up. And so if I got a bad grade or I failed a test or I had an unexcused absence or something, I would just tell my mother, oh, that's not me. That's the other Jason Brown and they got it wrong. And it was early enough in the sort of like the, the use of computers to coordinate school systems and things like that, that it was totally plausible that you would enter information for one Jason Brown and it would show up in the wrong place. So there was always an expiration date on that strategy. But, you know, when you're 13 years old, you don't care about those things. You just think I'm going to get through this crisis into the next one. Uh, but eventually the school caught on and their solution to the problem was that uh, I had to be Jason Robert Brown and the other uh, Jason Brown had to be Jason Keith Brown, I think. And then there was uh, the one behind us. I don't know what he had to do. Uh, but uh, so then I always was Jason Robert Brown. And when I got to college, of course, I could have reset and just gone back to being Jason Brown. But by then I was aware that there was sort of like this vast network of Jason Browns who all had been born at about the same time I was. And I thought, well, I better just keep the Robert to keep it from getting complicated. And in fact, even now there is, as a, a lot of you know, there's a, a, a figure skater uh, named Jason Brown, who's amazing. And then there is on the FBI's most wanted list, a, a serial killer named Jason Brown, who's not so amazing. But, uh, you know, I, I don't, I, I do get uh, Google notifications about him. So, uh, you know, I guess we're still connected. Uh, and it's good that I have the Robert um, in there. All right, so the reason I feel like I mention it is that this in a lot of ways is a video about threes. Um, and so I've got three names, uh, and uh, here's the other three. When uh, I was 24 years old, I started working with Daisy Prince for the first time, and we put together a show called Songs for a New World. Uh, and then, uh, oh, oh, it's right, it's, it, wait, which way am I? Okay, it's that one, Songs for a New World. Oh, also that one. Uh, and then, uh, 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 Seven years later, in 2002, uh, we did the New York premiere of our second show, which was called The Last Five Years. And you can sort of see the poster for that one. That one's just right. I mean, this. Uh, oh, there. Ah, uh, there they are. There's Norbert and Sherry just right uh, up there. God almighty. How do people do this for a living? Okay. So there's that. And um, so that was, I assumed that we were going to keep making shows together, uh, but it did not work out that way. Uh, and so for the last 22 years, uh, we've been very good friends and we collaborate on things whenever we can. She like she directed the concert I did with Stephen Sondheim, but we haven't gotten to create a show together since that time. And now, because this is a story about threes, our third show is now going to happen and it's going to happen at MCC and it's called The Connector and it starts performances on January 12th. And the whole purpose of this video that you're watching right now is to tell you that you can now buy tickets to see the show and you should do it sooner rather than later because there are not many performances, there are not many tickets and it has been 22 years since we, uh, since we got to do a show together. So you should probably you know jump on that uh, now. So uh, The Connector, is the name of the show and uh, the book writer uh, who's been working with us uh, also has three names. That's Jonathan Mark Sherman. Uh, and you know, we're three kind of people. So that all works. And there are three of us who run. It's just threes everywhere. It's like, uh, it's this is now it turns out this is a conspiracy theory video. So there are just threes everywhere you look. Anyway, the point is uh, we've got this show called The Connector. What is The Connector about? So. The connector was based, Daisy called me and she said, I want to do something about this thing that keeps happening where uh, stories in the press are very compelling and then turn out not to be true. And you have to know that this was nine years ago before certain people started using the word fake news. Uh, and so we were specifically focused on like three, I'll, I'll, well, I'll say there are three uh, stories that sort of caught our attention about this. Uh, the first one we'll talk about, let's say, is Janet Cook. And Janet Cook won the Pulitzer Prize uh, for writing a story called Jimmy's World for the Washington Post, which was about an eight-year-old heroin addict uh, in Washington, D.C. There was an enormous heroin problem uh, in the city. Uh, it was affecting young children, um, but it turned out Jimmy didn't exist. 
she made them up completely, and she returned the Pulitzer Prize. She's the only uh, uh, writer in the history of the Pulitzer Prize to actually return her award because it turned out that her journalism was completely uh, fabricated. Um, in 2014, uh, a writer named Sabrina Erdeli uh, wrote a piece for Rolling Stone magazine about a, uh, a campus rape at the University of Virginia that happened at a fraternity. Uh, again, a very serious issue was uh, the, the sort of abuse uh, that was going on in fraternity houses at colleges across America. A uh, very serious problem. Uh, however, this particular rape, as far as anyone can tell, never happened at all. That nothing of this kind occurred at that particular frat house uh, that year with that person. Uh, and so ultimately, uh, Rolling Stone had to retract the entire story. Um, and then, of course, uh, you can't talk about any of these things without talking about Stephen Glass. Um, uh, from 1995 to 1998, Stephen Glass wrote 41 articles for The New Republic, as well as a lot of articles for other magazines, including Forbes. Um, and uh, of those 41 articles for The New Republic, it was dis discovered in 1998 that 27 of those 41 were either partially or completely fabricated. So think about that. 27 articles in a three-year period that were almost entirely made up. That was the Stephen Glass situation, and it virtually took down the leadership of the New Republic. Those three things are symptomatic of a kind of larger issue in the culture. And you see it outside of journalism. You saw it this year just recently with Hassan Minaj, uh, if you remember uh, James Fry and A Million Little Pieces. There are all sorts of examples of things where we are told to believe something is true and the story is good and the story is relevant and the story is important. But then the details turn out not to be truthful at all. And Daisy was like, I want to do something about that. I feel like the musical theater is a place where we can explore that idea. And so that's what we started with, was that idea. How do we play around with that? And in me trying to find my way into this, I thought about the idea of a young writer who's just so desperate to make it. He's, it's so important to him to make it. And I thought... He wants to work for a certain kind of magazine. It's the magazine he spent his whole life dreaming about. Uh, and he submits a story and he gets taken under the wing of this editing legend at the magazine. And that's where our story begins. And so, of course, for me personally, the story of a young writer who's taken under the wing of a legend uh, was something I could totally relate to and wanted to write and felt could be very powerful and also the sort of desperate need to be accepted and the need to keep achieving and uh, the need to validate, uh, you know, my mentor's faith in me. Uh, all of those things uh, had a lot of personal resonance. And I just thought what the world of that magazine, which is called The Connector, uh, what that would be, what it would feel like, the music of that world and of that time. And we decided to set it in the same time as the Philip, uh, the, not the Philip Glass, because that's a different glass. Uh, and it set it in the same time as the Stephen Glass uh, stories. So uh, it takes place in roughly 96, 97. And what New York was like at that time, uh, of course, is still very resonant for me. I was a, you know, I was a 26, 27 year old kid in New York then and remember the feeling of it and, and, and the energy of it and the musical energy of it as well. So uh, uh, I think uh, the other three that I'll mention is just the musical ideas that I threw around in there. Uh, there are three specific genres that I sort of uh, wanted to play with. Um, I think, uh, you know, just sort of like uh, late 80s, early 90s prog rock uh, turned out to be very important to me. If you think about uh, King Crimson's Discipline album, uh, Peter Gabriel and the Security and, and So album, uh, that sort of stuff uh, was very uh, significant. Um, I think Acid Jazz turned out to be really significant to me in this, which is not a genre that I often played around in, but uh, the Tribe Called Quest and Liquid Soul and Modesky Martin and Wood, like that, that kind of stuff was really great. And I, I dug around in, in, in all of those places. And I think it all kind of uh, hangs, uh, and I wouldn't have expected this when I started, but it turned out to be this very fertile ground was to go to uh, Tropicalio or Tropicalismo, uh, which, um, you know, uh, in the 
late 60s, that was Cayetano Veloso and Gilberto Gil, but I think uh, by the time you got to the 80s and the 90s, David Byrne had taken it over uh, and uh, really used that as uh, something very inspirational to him, and it passed through to me as well. So I think all of those genres uh, pile up on top of the score, in addition to the fact that it just kind of sounds like me. So I'll probably try to post more videos where I walk through some of the songs specifically uh, and talk more about those. But that's that's the sort of introduction I wanted to give you to The Connector. And I wanted to give it to you so that you can go and buy those tickets. Uh, I will be playing uh, the piano, not this piano, which will still be here, but the piano on stage uh, at MCC with my band uh, every night. And my band is Randy Landau, who you all uh, know from all my shows. Uh, Todd Reynolds, my fiddle player, who was with me at Subculture for six years. Uh, uh, Hidi Hanari, a fantastic guitar player. Uh, Jamie Eblen will be playing the drums. It's, I, it's a tremendous uh, uh, band that I'm very excited about. Um, the cast is ludicrous. Uh, there's Ben Levi Ross and there's Hannah Cruz who uh, play the, the two leading characters. Uh, and then uh, the editor, the editing legend, uh, is played by Scott Bakula, who was a Tony nominee for Romance Romance long before he was a TV star in Star Trek and Quantum Leap and all of that stuff. And he's just an unbelievable singer who hasn't done New York theater in, I think, 30 years. And he's just, he's exactly the perfect person. Do you know what, how, it's like there's that weird thing where you write a show and you're like, well, maybe, you know, someone will show up who gets close. And then Scott turns out to be like, exactly the guy. It's a, it's a nice thing. So, uh, but also, also, as if that wasn't enough, you've got Max Crum. Uh, you've got Jessica Malaski. You've got Melinda Hull. Uh, Fergie Philippe uh, is uh, doing it. Um, Eliseo Roman. Uh, there's, there's, uh, there's a million amazing people in the show. There's not a million, actually. There's 12. But all 12 of them are sensational. And uh, Daisy is directing. And I... I can't believe it's been 22 years since you've gotten to see a Daisy Prince show because she's such a, a brilliant visual artist and such a, an emotional artist. Uh, so I, I'm very excited for you to see that. Beowulf Barrett designed the set, who also designed the last five years. Uh, so we're all back working together. Uh, the, the, all of the people are... Everybody's... Look, what am I going to... Uh, I put together a bad show? No, of course. So everybody's great. Uh, and I'm really excited about it, and it's only there for a little while. So uh, please come, is what I'm saying, because otherwise, why would I be talking for so long? Please come to my show. Uh, it's called The Connector, and uh, I want to also wish all of you just a happy Thanksgiving, and, uh, and thanks so much for uh, listening to my ranting, uh, of which I assure you there will be more soon. Peace out.